So contrary to what may be suggested by Oldest Calculus 2 videos in that playlist that I have, I actually studied biology and chemistry in school. So when I make the claim that information tends to be preserved in the same way that it does so in biological evolution, I'm not uh, displaying this sort of lateral thinking that tends to characterize sort of uh, gen generic metaphysical thought of the sort that you see in sort of new age movements, Deepak Chopra type stuff, where you take an idea from a completely different framework and try to apply it to another one, because that doesn't usually lead to lasting or meaningful insight, even though there is some use to that, as was even suggested by Feynman. You know, they, sometimes you could derive insight by taking a completely different approach to something. Uh, he's recommended automating that process of creativity by already having a bunch of sort of automated, uh, cocked and loaded is approaches to, to problems from vastly different uh, regions of, um, of problem space and, and then applying them to whatever arose. So um, th there is some use to that kind of thinking, but I'm not even engaging in that sort of thinking. I'm actually making a claim about how it is that information survives in the universe uh, and, and, and manages to, to gradually continue to survive while at the same time avoiding local maxima. So this is generalizable from how it occurs in biological evolution. In biological evolution, you have a single phenotype and you have many, many genotypes that are very similar. This composes a Wagner unit. And then you have a different phenotype with, again, the same situation. All these genotypes are actually very, very similar. So any gene drift doesn't actually lead to anything that's noticeably different most of the time if we assume that there's a, a very large population. However, this entire uh, network, uh, the, the natural selection landscape, is composed of these Wagner units which are highly connected. That's highly connected and what that allows is that you can now explore a vast um, expanse of morphological space very, very quickly. Uh, so the next best step up uh, is is right around the corner because most of the time you're making no difference. But when you do make a difference, it's really a difference. So um, that doesn't just apply to phenotypes and genotypes in biological evolutions. We could replace all these G's with M's, not to be confused with the uploads uh, in Robin Hansen's book. But here we have memes and we have a meme plex. So this could be an entire uh, ideology of value system that just traverses through time through vast desert sweeps throughout human history, um, whether we're talking about an entire thing like Christianity, any sort of sociological thing that, that manifests itself through human psyches. Um, and it's encoded in a sufficiently abstract way that whenever you change anything here, it doesn't really make a difference, so it manages to survive, and and it, the general network structure is the same, so it can always avoid uh, those local maxima because again, the next step up is very um, is is sort of at hand. Uh, evolution has uh, has a, the next step up at hand. So so if that's the case for both uh, genes and memes, I would assume and. Here, it may be a little different because now we're talking about a tenseless configuration. So we could have all those tenseless configurations that I keep talking about that go into specifying a, a specific anthropic observer moment. They're represented as A. Uh, that in itself would also, it, it depends on what you think is more primary. Do you think this network structure is ontologically primary to the very way it, to the very way in which we define the the survival of information, or do you think that this sort of linear notion of sequential events in time, in which selection pressures are applied to both memes and genes, is more fundamental? So it really depends on which one you think is more fundamental. I tend to think that this is more fundamental, especially because we are operating within a B-theory framework in which everything already happened. So there's a way to look at this entire evolution thing as everything already happened. So an instance of bound qualia here, or an anthropic self-selected observer moment, I'm using these synonymously, 
um, would be specified by many, many different uh, configurations in that same way that don't really make a difference. They ultimately create the same uh, experience and the way that you get a very different experience that is that manages to survive um, is by having that uh, entire structure. So I think the next thing that I'm going to look into is how this relates to uh, many worlds because that, that's giving me the vibe that there's something related there.